The last two years, uh, by this time, we won't be able to drive the skidoos on the land. There's too much ground and it's a lot warmer. This year we've had probably one week of uh, minus 40 at the most and we used to get two, three weeks in a row and more than once. And this year, this spring, it's it's been cold and a lot of snow. You can't tell what's going to happen. What's scary is that um, there's uncertainty because we don't know when to travel on the ice and our food sources are getting further and further away. We can't read the weather like we used to. It's changing our way of life. I was born in uh, Igloo um, while my parents were out uh, seal hunting with my uh, grandmother. And, uh, my name is Rosemary so Kiptana, and I was born out on the sea ice of Prince of Wales Strait in Canada's Western Arctic. I grew up on Banks Island in the tiny community of Saks Harbor. We call the island Ikahuk, which means the place where you cross to. For centuries, my ancestors have come here to hunt, trap, and fish. We are Inuvialuit, people of the land and sea. We depend upon both to supplement our food, clothing, and our way of life. Much has changed in the years since my birth. Fewer people hunt and trap. Tents and sod huts have been replaced with modern homes dog teams with snowmobiles and all-terrain vehicles. We have adapted. It is how we survive. But today, there are changes in the land, the sea, and animals. Changes that are resulting in uncertainty. My mother worries. When the salmon came in, you know that uh, people were getting quite a few salmons here. We've never seen them before like that. When you take the fish out of the nets, you know the eggs were pouring out of the fish, so it's ready to uh, spawn. Andy Carpenter knows Banks Island well. His father was Fred Carpenter, a legendary figure and one of the first people to settle in Saks Harbor. He remembers a much colder time. Uh, even the, in the winter time, you could uh, you see a lot of the changes because when I used to, we used to travel, travel with dogs at that time. And when you're, you carry kerosene for, you know, for heating, eh? for prime stoves, and the kerosene used to get just like milk. That's when it gets so cold. And fuel, fuel oil, you have to get just like jelly, so it's hard to pump out. So that's, you know, when that is going, you know. And you don't get like that anymore like that. John and Samantha Lucas are part of a younger generation that has grown up on this island. They are witnessing changes that affect the land and animals. Well, when you take walks along the beach, like we have a beach down here, you see a lot of the land falling in, and the banks are getting smaller. It's from um, the permafrost melting. And um, when you go out with the boat, you see um, a lot of more driftwood out there. I don't know what it's from, but we... Um, it's different. I'll just say it's different now. Springtime comes around, and you start seeing different kind of birds, you know. Uh, barn owls, that sort of thing. We don't, we've never seen them up here before. Getting different kind of geese, ducks, you know, mallard ducks and pink tails that we never used to see around here. Getting to be more swans, you know, it's very unusual for up here, because... More different colored yeah, geese. More, 
more different. Different spring from years before. Uh, we we was cloudy for weeks. It's not it's not really cloudy like, but it's really cloudy. But it's really different. Hard to explain. It's so white. It's between it's far like cloudy white out all and the time, huh? yeah. And it's really very hard to travel with skidoo because it's so white in the snow. It's really different from years before. We live in a very extreme and harsh climate now. We've always lived in a harsh climate. We've always had extreme weather conditions. Whether it's 24-hour uh, sunlight or whether we've got, uh, you know, blizzards with no visibility in the winter. Um, those were the extremes. But what is more extreme now is that uh, there's no predictability. In the last few years here, there have been people drifted out on the ice because of the winds and the currents. Uh, we really have to watch what we're doing here uh, because uh, the ice is not as thick as it used to be. Uh, what we used to see around here was uh, some multi-year ice mixed with some of the ice that's frozen like this year. But uh, you don't see so much uh, multi-year ice around anymore. Well, when it gets warm, uh, when it cracks, it hardly frees up anymore. Yeah? And then easy to open up. When we go out, cracks all over. When we get a bearded chill, we have to skin it really fast. The ice was kind of moving, eh? mm -hmm. make a big loud noise like a rifle shot one time, and the whole ice shake. Climate change means more than just a change in weather. Changing ice conditions, for example, affect seals and polar bears and fish. The earlier springs and later falls make it harder to predict when to hunt and trap. I sit on the board of the International Institute for Sustainable Development, a nonprofit organization involved in community development and natural resource management. Climate change is an important issue for this institute. Documenting one community's observations might provide a clearer picture of the kinds of changes taking place and the effect that they have on people who live close to the land and sea. It would be a project guided by the needs and wishes of our community, Sachs Harbour. Uh, we'd like to work with this community over the next year, actually, to really to learn from you uh, the kind of things that you're seeing on Banks Island and uh, try and uh, present what's happening in this community and on this island to Canadians in the South. Focusing on climate, the weather, how you see things changing. And uh, this whole, uh, the whole idea of this meeting here and this workshop is for us to come up with a plan together to do this year of work. I want us to break into two groups and, uh, you know, just a mix of people, some elders, some younger people in each group. And what I want people to do is brainstorm anything that you see that tells you the climate might be changing. Change in temperature. Which way? Uh, in the summer it seems to be a bit warmer now. Flies everywhere in the summer now, the ground is just hovering with them when you go out and land it. Everywhere. Last summer too, the water was a lot warmer from other years. The, the, the kids that were swimming right off the ocean there. And the uh, freeze up was a lot later last year. When I first used to work at the airport up here, they, when I first reported a thunderstorm, they said, you guys can't get thunderstorms, it's too cold. <laughs> we know about weather in other parts of the world especially the tornadoes, floods, and droughts. But 
These are extreme weather conditions. There are other changes, far more subtle and no less dramatic. The changes my community has seen because of their connection to the land. What's causing the biggest concern in your mind? Is it harvesting problems for animals? Is it the way the seasons are changing? Is it erosion? What's going to cause the most concern for the community and for the general environment of Sax Harbor? pattern changes is adapt our hunting strategies, for instance, go out earlier or later for certain species of animals, uh, maybe even learn how to hunt new animals, maybe that would be one. And again, damages to buildings will be caused because of the softer ground and a lot of starvation of animals due to the freezing rain. We have made many changes as a people. It is necessary in the Arctic. You adapt or die. My ancestors moved with the seasons and animals across the Arctic islands. Banks Island, the fourth largest island in Canada's Arctic, is dotted with the remains of their campsites. My immediate family came to Banks Island from Victoria Island. Many of those who now live in Saks Harbor came by schooner from the Mackenzie Delta in the days when Bang Salen was known as the White Fox capital of the world. You could earn $20,000 in the 1930s trapping fox. A clavic was one of the main trading centers. Peter Esau dreamed of becoming a Banks Island trapper. All my life when I was a kid, a little boy, I was thinking about people that go to a clavic a long time ago with schooners. They had lots of white foxes and they go to store and all kinds of money. They buy groceries and all sort of money they have. And I, I had that in my mind ever since I was a little boy. I wish I could make it to Saks Harbor. My parents, they used to live here on Bankstown a long time ago. They'd um, winter in Banks Island. And then in the summertime, when the water was well enough to go, they'd go across the schooners to get their year's supply, stay there for a month or so, and then come back and do the same thing again. And they travel back and forth with the schooners, and they're loaded with everything, with their gear, and two, three families on a little schooner, and all their dogs, everything they owned, and then they all came back in the fall time. That's the way they used to live. Years ago, it's harder life, but we're used to it. We use gas lamps and we use fuel stoves. Uh, when I first come here uh, with our CMP, they were not even burning fuel, they were burning coal. So it's changed very much uh, in the last 40 years. So different from long ago, long ago used this. We used to have long spring every spring. We travel to June, middle of June, you know, end of June, and now we can't even do that.
No seal, nothing. No beard seal. Yes, no, I saw dead. You can't get seals from a boat. Lumbu used to have ice flows all, whole summer. No, how many summers? No ice like this. Feel very sad. Feel no yeah. good for hunting. It used to be ice right up to September. Yeah. We used to have ice flows whole summer. Yeah. Soon as it's come, little bit people go there and go and tap the ice and wait for seals and tap the ice. Now how many summers we never have ice? It's very sad. I think all the ice will start melting. This summer I was saying uh, the ice must uh, all melt, that's why no mm -hmm. more ice. <laughs> well, if you keep melting the ice, maybe less seals every summer. It could be. Yeah, it could uh, be. Because lots of people said um, ice melt too fast and the mothers start leaving the babies behind and they starve. That's what some people will say. Yeah. And we will always feel happy when we see ice because the ice is bringing the seals from the north. Who we are as Inuit are defined by a number of characteristics, including your culture, your language, your oral tradition, your geography, your laws. And when one of those traditional characteristics, such as the ice going away and not coming back in the summertime, it affects what you eat. It affects your soul as a people. This here is an Arctic char. We do get rock cod. We have uh, sculpins. And uh, one other fish that we've been catching quite a bit lately is the uh, cisco or uh, herring. Yeah. There has been a few uh, salmon. It tells us that th the weather is getting warmer. It's quite noticeable over the last uh, few years, more so than it has been in the 60s, 50s, 60s. And even as far as 70s, it wasn't this warm. In the last five years or so, the land has been eroding quite a bit. The freeze-ups are later. Like, uh, last year, it must have been about a month and a half to two months later, freeze-up. The winds are a lot stronger in the uh, fall, uh, like gale force winds. There is some thunderstorms, uh, but I haven't seen any this year. Uh, last year there might have been one or two. But, uh, there, there are a few thunderstorms. Yeah. They're quite unusual for up here. If you're out in the land in the thunderstorm, you'll hear the thunder and uh, muskars will jump and uh, they wouldn't know which way to go. You know, Each time you hear a thunder, they'll run one way and then run back. And they, they just don't know what to do. <laughs> the warmer weather has begun to alter the look and shape of what has always been familiar to us, the land. Our shoreline is disappearing. Saks Harbor is built on ground that is permanently frozen. Most of the island is covered by this permafrost. John Kiwak has been monitoring some disturbing changes along the coast. I'd say about 87, you start noticing these uh, mudslides, like pretty bad. Like before, it used to be a little, little uh, sloughing from the uh, from the snow left on the side of the banks, but now it's the permafrost that's coming down. And the ground being disturbed and more of the permafrost being exposed to the heat and the sun and the wind, you know. 
Now there's more rain and sun is shining all the time or warmer, warmer summers, earlier springs. And once this start, I don't know what's going to stop it. I don't know the impact. It doesn't look good uh, for the community anyway. I think we'll have to evacuate the community and move somewhere else. All you notice all the disasters all over the world and it's happening here. There are signs of permafrost melt inland as well. Lakes are disappearing and mudslides are transforming beaches. One lake along the coast actually drained into the ocean, carrying the fresh water fish with it. Well, we're about five miles from the community inland, and we're looking at some uh, permafrost melting. Three, four years ago, the permafrost started showing here, and it just kept going from there. I think if that stays exposed, it's just gonna keep going. and Who knows how far it's gonna go. I think the bigger it gets, the faster it'll go. It just started off small. And down here, you just used to be able to walk along the beach there. And now it's all mud. You could see where the uh, wind is taking shape there. And as the wind melts it, the ground just keeps dropping. You notice it sometimes along the coast where the waves erode the uh, shoreline, but not something, I guess, up in land. And I'm not sure if it has any effect on any of the ecosystem or the, the animals, the land. And One thing I thought about was uh, the lemmings. Um, they're the main food source for the foxes and the owls. And like if they're in the holes and the ground slumps in or caves in or whatever, you lose all your lemmings, then you'll just have a chain reaction from there. Elders like Frank Kudluk look forward to the return of winter and the abundance of ice for drinking water. It is something that he and his wife Martha can no longer count on in the spring and summer. When it's cold weather, it's better to get ice, easier to chop. It's hard to chop when it's mild, it's just broken pieces. We get ice every time when we're running out for tea or drinking water from the lakes. 
It's better than tap water, and it's clear. Sometimes the weather get warmer, and fall time it's never freeze for quite a while. Hardly any more icebergs. Mm -hmm. We are on kid ice from icebergs. They hardly do that anymore because it melts away too fast. Scientists have been studying the Arctic for decades, but communities rarely see the results of their work. As part of the IISD Climate Change Project, a group of scientists have been making regular visits to Sachs Harbor, recording the changes people have observed in the land, sea, and animals. The results of their research will be compiled and shared with the community at the end of the project. I think Inuvialuit knowledge or traditional knowledge is, is part of who a people are, right? It's, it's a way of life. It's a way that people live, um, their relationship to the land, to the animals, the, their reliance or connection on the land through harvesting. Um, it's, it's local expertise, right? But it's, it's more than just local. It's another way of understanding relationships and, and the place of humans in, in the whole scheme of things. Have you seen any changes in the ice conditions and how that might have affected how you could get out to hunt polar bears in the spring? Or early winter? In the early days when uh, we used to do hunts, we had mostly, uh, we traveled mostly with dogs at the time, so we had to do a lot of traveling on the ice. And we used to travel uh, to hunt seals, we go to the open water. Open water used to be way out, uh, further out right, than right now. And Around February, it used to freeze pretty well straight across. And that's when people used to do a lot of uh, polar bear hunting. And now, nowadays, it's so much uh, broken, uh, broken ice in, the, in February that uh, you hardly can go out now. So it's One of the things that, that I think is very promising with this project is that you're getting information from people you know, who are spending a lot longer within a given area at all seasons than I, for example, have done or would be able to. It's a very pleasurable activity to actually listen to you know, so many people you know, who are so forthcoming and so knowledgeable. Uh, it thaws that faster. You know, I noticed since I've been here since 55, and, uh, 57, that's July 17th, me and our sample was driving dogs in the ice, July 17th. Mm. And then September year, we had dog racing, uh, 1st of July. And now we can't even go in there. We go down uh, picnicking by boat now in 1st of July. So these are really changes, you know. Uh, I think uh, if this keeps up, polar bears and seals going to get affected because uh, Young bears, you know, uh, how are they going to survive? Mm. Especially if they go The women in the community can probably give us better sort of qualitative information on, on uh, the condition of the animal that was harvested and changes o over time because they're the ones who are uh, butchering up the meat, so they're going to they're gonna know whether it's fat, uh, in terms of pelts of foxes, uh, bears, and so forth, they're handling it, um, and uh, they're going to be able to tell you whether it's a, the bears are fatter this year than they were last year because they have to work a lot harder to get all the, you know, to, to flush the hides. <laughs> The Inuvialuit's traditional knowledge about our world around us, like uh, the weather, the animals, the migration patterns, the changes that we've seen. This is knowledge that has been accumulated over many, many centuries. It's oral uh, tradition. 
It's uh, scientific knowledge. It's our scientific knowledge. John and Samantha Lucas spend a lot of time on the land. Their son Trevor is part of a new generation, still anxious to learn traditional skills. In the spring, the family fish and hunt geese. In the winter, they look for polar bear and musk ox. We traveled about uh, 30 miles to go hunt musk ox. And uh, like myself, I always like to have uh, the emergency stuff, like, you know, a tent, primer stove, a you know, box, that sort of thing, in case it gets windy. Once we see a herd, we just uh, kind of drive slowly up to them and pick out what you want and go from there. We used to use a lot of caribou kits, but now we're only allowed at one caribou, so we use a uh, a lot of people use the muskox hides for when they're out camping. And um, the hides, the, the young ones are used for handicraft, for mittens or mucklucks, and also for trim on your parkas, which is really warm. It's downy inside the fur. And uh, like, for instance, if you're out traveling, you got snow on and you can just brush the snow off. The snow comes out really easy. It doesn't stick to the fur. And um, with the meat, you make burgers with the hams, and you could almost also make dry meat out of them. Well, to me, I enjoy going out hunting and trapping, that sort of thing. It's what I do. I'm still learning the process of uh, learning all the time what, what I'm doing, you know. I'm not trying to be the best, but I'm trying to make a living. But it's a lot of work. If you like to eat good, you work hard for it. It is the middle of May, and spring still hasn't arrived on Banks Island. Spring is our favorite season, the time when the geese return and we head out to our hunting and fishing camps. There's always an air of excitement. People visit, fish, tell stories, and wait for the geese. But no one is hunting this year. Everyone is anxious. The geese haven't come. Everyone was expecting another year of record-breaking warmer temperatures. Instead, it is cold. Two years ago, travel by skidoo was impossible because of all the mud and the early breakup of the rivers. Some people were even stranded out on the land. How can we prepare ourselves for such unpredictability? What will happen to us if we can no longer rely on our instincts and traditional wisdom? This is really late spring. Um, it's been cold the last two or three weeks. We have had a lot of snow. We usually start getting geese around May 12th on, and right now it's up to 26 or so, and I still haven't shot a goose yet. I hope they come in, but I guess uh, it's been cold, there's a lot of snow, there's no water in the rivers, and it's too cold for them when they, if they come. So there were a few that came, but they've gone back because it's just too cold for them to stay around. Well, the uh, geese are still waiting across in the mainland, and uh, just waiting for the weather to improve, and they come across, and right now their eggs are getting pretty big, and the snow stays like this for another week or so, it, they'll probably be dropping their eggs uh, 
all over the place. For this time of year, to have this much snow is really unusual. Like, you know, it's not getting... Uh, the weather's too cold and the snow is not getting any softer. Like, you know, you don't see any melting and this is just about going to end up May here now. Two, maybe three years ago, in just about two days, there was so much water, we couldn't travel uh, too far. And then this year is completely different. There's so much snow and it's still cold. This time of year you used to be traveling in slush, water under the snow. But this year it's been really different. It is no longer possible to tell when the seasons will change or what they will bring. Fairly pure ice yeah. underneath. You can see the water coming out of the ground. Yeah. The ice on the lakes is thicker than usual, and we've had more snow than people have seen in 30 years. Yet, the Arctic sunlight is still capable of penetrating the permafrost. Larry Carpenter is worried about the erosion he's seen along the coast. He wants one of the scientists to take a look. The stuff, like when you're traveling with a ATV in summer, you go into this stuff, you just, you come to almost a dead stop. People have been telling us uh, that the, the past, uh, let's say, dozen or 15 years have been really dramatically quite different on the landscape. Uh, and there's been things like they've noticed increased snowfall, they've noticed um, a lot of uh, melting features on the landscape that they haven't noticed as much in the past. They've always been there, but I think people have been telling us that there's been more and more of this happening. And that's, that's really uh, of concern to us uh, in terms of changing climate. It's, it's a key signal, perhaps. No one in Saks Harbor knows what any of these changes will mean in the future though everyone has their own ideas. I worry that we are like those canaries they used in the mines long ago, the ones that warn the miners of danger. Are we a messenger for the rest of the world? These types of changes, I don't know. Uh, we're usually pretty good at adapting to sort of changes, but something like this, who knows what could go on. Virtually the whole town here, you know, make their living from the land in one way or the other. And uh, it's going to affect not only Saks Harbor, but the whole north in general. I believe that the Arctic is a very, very important uh, ecosystem to the health of the rest of the planet. I guess what we can do is, you know, just try and educate and say, you know, hey, watch out. This is what's happening to us. <laughs> <laughs>